uh, the meeting of the cable advisory board. Oh, great. Uh, first thing, let's take a look at the meeting minutes from last month. The next item on the agenda is the station manager updates. Uh, City Hall will be making an announcement next week as the status of the station manager. So that's where that stands. Do you know what it is, or you just can't say, or you don't know either? Um, I'm not going to try and find it. No, no, no. I'm just wondering if you're kept in the dark. Or... No, no, we're not kept in the dark. Oh, okay. Uh, and Gabby was actually on the committee, so we're not kept in the dark. Right. Um, but there'll be an announcement from City Hall next week, so we're just gonna leave it there with that. Unless anyone else has anything else to add to that? Okay. Thank you. How will that announcement come in? What kind of form? Uh, it's gonna be press release by the mayor's office. Um, all right, so let's move on to uh, evaluate producer agreement. So for this, so actually, why don't you take over for the producer agreement? Okay, then. Should, do I, okay. So. so I know you've been pulling together and looking at all the stuff. Each yep. of us has a producer agreement with us now. Yeah. Um, so we can just go over it and um, let you just take the lead if that works for you. Okay. And then report back to you once more. Um, do you have anything you want to give to us and the public now just about length or anything you've noticed? Like an overview, not actual. No, not just like, yeah. Just an overview on the various, what you Yeah, you've been researching the different Oh, so what, what I plan on doing yes. is, is looking at, um, you know, doing a spot check and looking at uh, various producer agreements in the um, Massachusetts area and comparing them to what we have at this moment. And you're going to talk about that next month. Correct. Thank you. All right, all right. The next time I'm not doing that. Great. No, I was just for the minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that means there's nothing on tonight. This is just a progress report on where we stand? Yeah. Okay. So Yvette's leading the review process. Um, Jay has delegated it since Yvette has the most hands on experience with these kinds of producer agreements. And so the next month there'll be something concrete to look at? So Yes. Yeah, okay. so, so we're going to talk about it here. We'll, we'll bring it back. Um, if there's a station manager next month, then we want them to be a part of it as well. Yeah. Um, also, we'd like to get additional feedback from people as well. And then, you know, if it makes sense, changing it and making it more in line with the rest of the state, if it's not already in line with the rest of the state. Does either of you have any input? Uh, yeah. like to well, it really doesn't need to be in line with the rest of the state because some cities have unique circumstances and they'll have some things in their form that just aren't going to be anywhere else. Yep. Okay. Um, but there was something, yeah, 
that I noticed. I, I don't remember exactly where it is on here, but it's part of it, which is standard. It, it mentions that you know you've read the uh, policies and procedures of the station and had a chance to discuss them. And of course, this is the part before the horse. As we got this and signed it, there are no policies and procedures. That's, that's a great point. So. Uh, will there be some, or is that clause just going to be struck, and what's relevant is going to be on the form itself? Well, I think that that's one of the items. There's four pages. There's a lot of items we have, and I think that's yeah. definitely one to take a look at. Yes. I mean, one. just to make sure that the, the form is up to date to what is going on at the cable access station. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because the more so, that's in the policies and procedures mm -hmm. of the station, the less there needs to be on this thing. Mm -hmm. And that, that'll, you know, that's a good way to streamline it. Thank you, Arthur. Joe? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, the Malden one that I gave this board at, at the board's request um, mm -hmm. is a one-pager, and Somerville is a two-pager. So it's not about being in line with the state. It is about being simple and easy so that people can come in and use the equipment that they've purchased through the franchise fee, or even if they don't have a franchise fee, if they don't pay for cable, if they're a citizen, a business, or a civic group, they should be able to just sign a form and come in. Uh, now, Jay, is the four-page uh, agreement separate from the Corey check? Is that a fifth page? The Corey check is a separate topic because we had to move the meeting date. There was a conflict. Uh, the solicitor's office was planning on meeting here next week. Excellent, but good. Because of the conflict, we had to move the meeting. Um, they couldn't make it, so we want to at least tackle the producer agreement. Because, um, as I've stated in the past, it's unsupervised um, activity with children. At Somerville Cable, uh, you've got Heather with the children and the youth media, which we've always had at Somerville. Uh, Gordon used to run it. You've got kids running around. There's no quarry check because there's supervision. Um, ben Brown, when he was installed, he was the supervision. And um, Chrissy Frazier, she's a supervision. So the Corey check is not necessary if you rent the building. So I, I don't understand. Free speech platform is um, is thwarted when you have people renting the place and not having Corey checks. But if you're running for office, you have to have a Corey check. So then the mayor gets to uh, have one of her people see what Michael Marks's background is or Brianna Longo Kern and that gives an unlevel playing field to the administration, and it's crazy. It makes no sense, and it's laughed at when I go to some of the stations that I'm a member of. They laugh at it. So um, Medford has always been an embarrassment to the other communities. It's, we have to change that, and as we talked before, we need a team. We need to all get along and then move this thing forward quickly. So when we hear that, oh, well, it's going to be moved to next week because of uh, next month because of uh, there was a conflict. For me, wow, it's been 30 years. It's been 30 years. When, and Arthur certainly knows, you know, David Scarry was the lawyer. He, he started TV3. Then he became the lawyer for TV3. Much like Winchester, you had these entrenched people that were operating the station. And we citizens want to do our art. Even if it's my grandmother's cooking show, God rest her soul, because that was a lot of fun, which ran on the old TV3. Just fun stuff like a cooking show, which is what public access is all about. Uh, just the community. You know, I have a great idea for the sports, um, not future sports, that should be academic. I'm talking about the previous sports that we've lost. I have a great idea that I've, I've talked about to my friends about resurrecting a lot of the sports events that, that went on that we never got to see on TV3. In fact, it was Malden TV that would tape the Medford Malden games. So they were taped, but why should you rely on Malden? When we have Jack Dempsey, we have the, the high school channel. So these are the kind of things I want to see on the table, not for my benefit. If I get hit by a truck tomorrow, I want to know that I helped you people construct something that will help and benefit the city for the next 30 years. This is not about me. I've got a thousand shows. Arthur's got probably 500 shows. We've, we've done our public access. This is about the community and helping. And this is what we need to expedite it. It needs to be quicker. It needs to happen fast so that people can have fun. There can be great outreach and we can just have a, a vibrant station. So my question is, uh, anything about the satellite station? Before you go to that question, Joe, I, I just want to confirm what you were just asking. 
So you're saying what needs to go faster? Us to look at these forms and make these major changes? Is that what you're asking? Well, it's not a major change because we don't have a station. This is something City Hall concocted. Mark Rumley told me. He told me he created the quarry check and that Ben created the indemnification. Okay, but that, that, that piece, that's what you're asking about, is that just looking at what we were just talking about and making those changes as soon as possible? I just want to clarify what you're Yeah, because asking. the citizens are kind of in a quandary. You know, in Somerville, you have a board of directors. In Winchester, you have a board of directors. But in Medford, it's, it's as um, gray area as figuring out where the entire peg monies go general fund, that's how gray area, everything is in Medford. So the citizens don't know where our money goes and we don't know why City Hall comes up with these cockamamie four page indemnification agreements that really have nothing to do with access. And thank so, you, Joe. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, one of the points I'd like we could take a note of is on actually number one mm -hmm. um, is the producer or submitter assumes all responsibility, mm -hmm. that whole paragraph. Okay. If we could really take a look at that compared to others. Because okay. um, if you read it, it's right. everything that you have to, that whole paragraph, I'd like to see if um, the others do the same thing. Okay. If I may, just a, a little guidance on that. City Hall seems very paranoid, so it, they make it a lot deeper than other stations. Just indemnify it, you take all responsibility, if there's any slander or libel, then you're responsible. That's just par for the course. But City Hall Medford goes much deeper, and it's just kind of, you need a Philadelphia lawyer to read it. And that's what scared Johnny Byers away. Not the Corey report, but the indemnification agreement. He didn't understand it, and he authorized me to use his name, and he said um, that's why he's not doing his sports show, which he loves. Um, same thing with number two. something on that. Sure. Um, yeah, this, as you're calling it, paranoia, goes way back to before either of us joined. I was kind of, for lack of a better word, TV3 historian. When we made the moves, I'm sorting through documents and reading things and learning the history of TV3. And at one point in the past, this was, I'm not sure if Mike McGlynn was the mayor yet or not. It may not be. I think because it was still under the Plan E form of government. Um, I don't know what it was that happened, but somebody got upset and the city wanted the right to preview every show and say whether or not it could run, which, I, yeah, to you, you know what a mind-blowing wrong thing that is. They had their city solicitor look things over and it was not Mark Rumley. I don't know if he was part of the city solicitor's office at the time, but it was not Mark Rumley. And the conclusion of the city solicitor was that if we would have put, have the members put a disclaimer on each program that they're, you know what the disclaimer says, Joe, however you want to word it, that that would make them responsible and remove the city of any liability. And then the city stopped insisting that they want to look at the shows first. And so basically, if you're hands off, and we, and we the member, have that, you know, read this, we sign this, that we understand it and put the disclaimer on ourselves rather than have the station at it because if we hand it to you with the disclaimer on it, obviously we put it there and we should know what it means. Uh, then you're okay. But even if you want to have some policies and procedures where you want to look at a few things, this is what makes it dangerous because not only when a, when a station does it, a public access station, it would be wrong, but it wouldn't be a First Amendment violation. When the city runs it, that's the government, and suddenly it is a First Amendment violation. Also, even if we sign saying we're solely responsible, if the station has its own rules as to what to do and what to look at, they're sort of okaying anything that's on. So being human, mm -hmm. when the day comes that they make what somebody might consider a mistake and somebody wants to sue, how can you say the member is only responsible when the station was reviewing it and said, yeah, it's okay? So for your own protection, you want to be totally hands off and step back from everything, especially now when it's the government running it. 
And I heard from members out there that while you were on the board of MCC TV3, they were reviewing tapes. And you probably know that. Um, when you the, say they, the board or was staff? Staff. Them? I start to get the feeling sometimes people aren't doing what is written to do, but I never caught anyone at it. Uh, I mean, there would be people, politicians would call, you pull that tape? I said, you can't pull it, you know? And they say, well, it's this, it's that. I says, oh no. Only a court of law can decide if something is obscene or something is liable or whatever. I mean, you can attest to it. I don't want to bring up any sore points, but in the various court cases you've been in, whatever the outcome has been, whether it's been in your favor or not in your favor, they never once, the court says, you can't do that again. All they might say is, because you do this, you are now responsible for they something. They were all in my favor. Even when Frank thought he won, he didn't. Well, I'm, I'm saying even they the time that I was talking to you, we have yeah. this great discussion. I just want to have us at least get back to oh, yeah. the producer piece. Okay. We're the old um, guard. Forgive us. We know too much. Well, we've been there before. We want to help you from not having to learn by making the mistakes yourselves. Of course. Right. Thank, and thank you for the disclaimer note about sure. that. And the disclaimer is pretty easy. There are standard ones you can just... Absolutely. Yeah. They're all of online and people can just... Making it available teaches people that, oh, you better watch what I say. The funny thing is, last night on uh, Decades TV, they have the show talking about Hollywood year by year. The year 1932, MGM had some movie, Rasputin and the Emperor, about how terrible Rasputin and that whole family was. Well, back then, some of the family was still alive. They didn't like what was said, and they sued MGM. And from that case sprung up the, uh, what the, what the, Movies do, you know, the the, uh, the events and people depicted here are, are purely fictional and any resemblance between actual persons, you know, or the living at that is a coincidence. That sprang out of that court case. So it goes back to 1932. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so the other, another item that uh, I question is, page three, item number 10, produce agrees to be available to my community by telephone or other agreed upon method to receive any inquiries or comments pertaining to produce this program. I think we at the very least have to have something there like, you know, you have to be available within a week's time frame or something where, you know, you know I'm on call 24 seven, just a little more defined. Okay. There's lots of extremely defined spots, so. Well, for some input on that, all you need is the producer's home address, and they shouldn't have to be on call at all. If someone doesn't like it, they can sue, um, or they can write a letter of complaint. But there's no reason to call a producer in. And then page three, again under 10, um, producer affirms that he or she has received, read, and will confirm to all policy procedures in the Metro community media. Which page did you say? Uh, page, page, three, page three, number 10, oh, second yeah, item. And we're going to read that to you that the producers had an opportunity to read this producer agreement. Um, I actually thought that's okay. I thought I was going to talk about them. Mm -hmm. May I mention something on that? If sure. It sort of goes back to bottom of number four on page one where you're giving the definition of obscenity. Yeah, I, I noticed that. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're saying that, you know, the producers had the audit opportunity to discuss this agreement with council or with staff or things. I'm thinking that you should just say about obscenity, don't describe it because uh, frankly, I'm uncomfortable reading the definition of it. Imagine if you have a staff member that now has to discuss it with a, a, a producer member. One or the other or both may be uncomfortable with that conversation. And you don't want to get into situations to make people uncomfortable. I, I think the best way is for obscenity is you know, only a court of law can, can decide, you know, in a case if something is truly obscene or not, and you're, you're you know, you're doing, if, in other words, you're at your own risk. You make the stuff, but if you do something that's actionable, you're gonna face the consequences, and we can't really tell you in advance if something is gonna be found bad or not. And I say I partially agree with you. Yeah. And the reason why I say partially is because I'm concerned that it isn't defined, 
that I don't want some, to give someone the off window of opportunity to say, oh, I don't like that, so I'm going to consider that obscene. On the flip side of it is, to your point, about yeah. defining it. So I think that, that's definitely, for me, one is more the research as to how yeah. other stations handle it. Well, at this point, it was good enough for the Supreme Court. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the famous obscenity case. Yeah. There's no clear definition as yes. much as it's just, I know it when I see it. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, uh, I'm yeah. kind of in between. I'd be curious of what the other stations do about that. That's a good point. And yeah, that's, 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 where, that's one where I'd like to see, you know, how, how do they define, how do they do that to exactly to your point? Yeah, well, that's why I'd say if you say, we can't define it, you know, we can't warn you, use your judgment, you know, they, in other words, they can talk to an attorney if they want. Yeah. But well, that's why this is. Towards, yeah, you put in your disclaimer and, and the state, you as a station, just run it. But that's why there's a safe harbor. So in Stoneham in 1995, we had an abortion video from the religious right. And Kathy, the station manager, put it on at 3 in the morning. Now, that made them very upset, but it was a safe harbor. And it was uh, an ultrasound showing the baby being destroyed. It was very controversial. Now, that's not obscenity per se. To some people, it might be. But it is objectionable to a lot of people. And they had to run it, so they ran it at 3 a.m. Uh, so that is why there's a safe harbor. Yeah. You know, to that safe harbor, it's something I discovered from the time we, in between the time we closed down Canal Street and then we opened Five High Street. I'm looking and I'm on the FCC website and they have an FAQ page on public access. They mention that they don't have control over it, but so many people think they do that they put up this page. And the last we knew of you know, how rules were, as just as Joe says, you know, at night, which I don't know if they strictly said 10 p.m. or later, but, you know, that the courts had said this is the only thing you can decide. You can't not put a program on, but you can decide where to put it. Mm -hmm. But the FCC site, uh, and I'm sure it's still up there, it says that with very few exceptions, and it doesn't list what those exceptions are, unfortunately, where, to, where you place a program has to be non-content based, your decision on where to put a show. And if taking something with objectionable content and deciding to put it at a certain hour is not a content based decision, then what is? So it's saying you can't do that anymore. I wish they would have cited, there must have obviously been some court case where the court reversed the decision of that earlier court that says you can base it. Unfortunately, the FCC site did not give any reference to where they're basing that claim from. And I think it's good we can, if we can try and find out, if for no other reason than if somebody calls us wrong, whether it's us, the member, or you, the station, you've got the point of a law to look up and show them, no, we're not wrong, here's the current rules. Essentially, it's got four points, which are can't overthrow the government, you can't do libel, you can't threaten to kill someone, and there's a fourth one in there too, but those are the basic, oh, you can't do calls for action, have your own personal business, and promote it on public access TV. So those four things are really the things that a safe harbor won't protect. But everything else is like fair game. And if I walked into a Manhattan hotel room and I was shocked. The public access had hardcore pornography that the, um, the members did on like a porch in a, a party, a gay party, and they were doing things that like I was I'm no prude I was shocked seeing it on TV I'm like oh my god this is access this isn't a porno movie this is just public access in the daytime in New York City so there you go um, different cities have different rules that's, that's good I think New York is where that first test case was where they said you can't deny the person but you can decide where to put it so I'm not surprised that New York is probably the one that broke that I you know, the court it. decision. Yeah, but you know, um, again, the rules are pretty clear. Safe harbor, don't overthrow the government and make threats. So there you have it, you know. Okay. Um, so those are some of the points that I found. Okay. Do either one of you have any additional points? I don't have anything to add at this time. So if I think of anything, I will let you know. Okay, then, and I'll build it. But I think largely, okay. Reviewing what our peers are doing in regards to some of the issues that are being mentioned, especially since they're doing it in a more condensed fashion. Yes, yeah, there's a lot of, it's like a lot of legal inside hours. 
So yeah. and also keep in mind that since you are the government, there's things that you cannot do that these stations that are not the government can do. Yeah. Right. Which is why you're severely hampered and really the city should try to get this turned over to a non profit as soon as possible. Absolutely. So those are all valid points and good points. We appreciate them. Do either one of you have anything else you'd like to add before we uh, vote to move on to the next item? No, not on this thing, but okay. I do have something that you're not covering that you probably should take it last. Okay, yeah. yeah. I know that you want to speak and you're more than welcome to speak as well. Um, all right, so I'd like at this point to vote to move on to the next item. Just make sure we're okay. Yeah, do you, yeah. Do yeah. you want to double check your notes with my notes on um, the specific items Jay, Jay mentioned? Yeah, if I can get those from you okay. after, that would be great because okay. then I can include them with the minutes in case we blast. Okay. All right, so let's move on to the next item. That's good. Yes. yes. So this is an item that um, I want to bring up with both of you to see if you agree, if you disagree. Um, I feel like going forward, uh, you know, once we have a station manager in place, there's gonna be a lot of things going on. And I think it'd be the most effective utilization for each of us. And if we really assign roles to how we can interact with the station, interact with the city, so what I propose and we can vote on, you can say yes, no, or you know, discuss it, is Gabby, I was thinking that um, you would be great to be the technical advisor and staffing, you know, type of point of contact between the station manager and us or um, to help with that. And in the point of contact doesn't mean we have to have all the answers. It's just people know who to go to. Yep. And then we can all help each other. Okay. Um, and then you bet I was thinking that for you what would be great would be to be the point of contact for basically government relations so for the board and for the station to really be the point of contact with the mayor's office city solicitor other departments as need be okay. and then I was like myself um, work on community relations for the station trying to get more shows work with different organizations try to bring them on board and then also, too, if producers have complaints, if other people have complaints that our members are producing a show, that um, I'd be the point of contact for that if they want to elevate it up to the um, to us. Um, and then obviously we discuss it between. So how do the two of you feel about that idea? I like the fact that it's streamlined. That it gives individuals one person to speak with. Yeah. I think it's good to have responsibilities defined. It's going to help us all work together better. Yeah, I figured for each of the folks, they'll know who to go to. There's going to be a little overlap probably sometimes between you being the point of contact and myself just with the um, Votech. So one of the things I was mentioning is a cooking show with the Votech. I've pretty much got them to agree, although this new station manager will have to work with the details with the Votech, uh, us being able to film cooking sh shows in their brand new cafe, which is beautiful. Actually, we have seen that, I think, all together. Yeah, um, so we have that, so I've been working with the director of the Votech, and I think it makes sense for me to continue that. Um, outside of that, I think you're, you know, and that's more because it has to do with community relations and, and the show, really. Um, so I want to go for that. So if the two of you agree with that, let's, let's vote on it to make sure that we each agree with the roles, so that way it's all good. So. Let's have a So I move that we adopt the points of contact as Jay has suggested. And I, su I second that. Excellent. All right, I'm in favor. Excellent. As am I. Perfect. Um, so that's perfect. So I think that'll, um, I think that'll help. I think that'll help us. I think it'll help them. It'll allow, like myself, just to continue talking to different groups and everything else, so. Thank you both. Thank you. All right, so let's do, do either one of anything to add to that? No. I All think right. we should do announcements really quickly, though, about officially announce the date of the next meeting. Yep. And if we have a location in mind or. So, the location that I'd like to see us to go to, again, it's kind of too soon to say, we have to book it. Um, would be at the T 
TV studio. I because of the next one. Pending announcement. Yep. Yes. So the TV studio, I think, makes the most sense. Um, I know that. I would propose because of travel time that we move the meeting to 6:30 or 7 to accommodate people's schedules. As long what as works for the TV? Yeah. That works. Is 6:30 better for you or 7? I mean, I for me seven, but let's do you seven. Know. Let's do seven. Yeah. Okay. That was good. Right. So the date that we're thinking is the fourth Thursday. So no, I will not be available on August thirtieth. So the twenty third. So the twenty third. So right. That's the fourth. Oh right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's oh. important. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. August. 23rd. Okay. So August twenty third at seven at the station. Possibly in the station, we, we have to confirm that right. there isn't something else going on. That okay. That's where we'd like to have it. Tentatively at the station. Yeah. So for sure that day, and if it's, yes. yes. And if it ends up back here again, then you probably okay. make it earlier? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 7 p.m. is better for the public. That's good. So we don't want to end, well, one, two, either one of you have any additional items you'd like to bring up? I think I'm all set. Perfect. So I want to make sure the two of you both get your chance to bring up the points that you want to bring up. So yeah, it just goes back to past things we've been talking about. You know, reaching out to the community with yep. training and things in West Medford Community Center and other places. Does the station already have the equipment necessary to do that, or would you need additional equipment? As far as I'm not sure, as far as training or as far as we were saying, you know, have have different days where. You might be there with equipment at the West Med Community Center so people can't get all the way to the high school and do things. We there. actually, what we want to do is have permanent equipment permanent, yeah. at both locations. Do we have enough for that already? Um, we have to, once the station manager begins, yeah. that's going to be one of the right. priorities to figure out. Because I heard something that could, if we don't have the equipment, that's going to make things tough. Now, I may not have it all right. It's, you know, in talking to people that aren't directly involved with this, sometimes somebody will say something yeah. that's not the way it is. Yeah. But it started out that uh, a friend of theirs was gonna donate some piece of equipment to the station in their, in their mother's name or whatever. And they said, donate, why? He says, well, they, they need more equipment. And the way it came down, I guess, for the, of course, it's the vocational school classroom, you know, training. Um, I guess Chrissy made a, a sort of a wish list of more equipment that they need, but there aren't any funds to buy it. And if they're out of funds for equipment, because uh, anything you get, you know, really belongs to that that yeah. studio, you may be sunk in trying to get the stuff you want. No, I know you can I, get volunteers. You know, uh, no, I mean, not volunteers. Let me just answer this way that. Yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> That concern, I don't share that concern. I, I'm familiar with what you're talking about, yeah. but I don't share that concern based on the budget that we saw already. Uh, looks like we will, but again, it depends on the cost of equipment. That's where we have to wait for the station yeah. energy to come on board, and then we can look at the numbers and make sure yeah. we have it. But the three of us said that what we want to do is, and correct me if I'm mistaken, is have permanent equipment at both locations. With the editing stuff, it won't be a whole editing equipment, but using like the Adobe Suite. Oh, I understand. Yeah. And then we also want to implement training. That's so, no, that would be great. You know, we want yeah. we want to train people to be producers. We want to train people to do camera sure. work. We want to train people to do the different pieces. And we already have um, a growing list of people who are going to be who said they would like to volunteer at the station. Yeah. The I mean, what's, what's nebulous? Is this budget Peg's budget? Or is it the studio's budget? Because if it's a studio's budget, the vote gets for his dibs. Um, There's a split. Two so the money budgets. is split between okay. the school and the station. So then if you've got money of yours left, we have they can't box. grab it for something. That's correct. Right. 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 Yeah. See, what, what concerned me is, like saying, I know Joe always mentions it about the money. Uh, the fi out of the 5%, 3% goes to the general fund that was passed by a home rule petition. What year? Do you remember? 80s? Oh, a long time ago. When, when, pretty much when it, first, when it first started from the beginning. In fact, it was only, for, it was only the 3%. The access was not funded from, from the franchise fee. 
they got that, there was a second line entry in your bill, it's a franchise related cost or something, it was a fixed amount which we would which we would get at the beginning of each year, it would raise from each year, but it was a fixed amount and the public access would get the fixed amount and the educational access would get the same fixed amount. There was nothing in the contract earmarked for the government channel because in the beginning there was no government channel. Comca uh, not Comcast, was Warner was still building it. Uh, he's still running it. It was the last act, the last week that the Plan E City Council met. That's, you know, when the next meeting was going to be January and the, the uh, people had voted to change it to Plan A. That very last week, they voted to create the government channel. But at least in what's available as far as the council resolution and what they talked about at that council meeting, because I've seen the video of it, they didn't discuss the mechanics of where the money was coming from for But out of those things, like Joe says, that 1% for the educational channel is going to some teachers or something, and that hasn't changed. Even though you're now a peg, that 1% from the franchise fee is still going to them. The other 1% that went to us, the public access, that had to run, like I said, the public access, and it really wasn't enough. And now it's running pegged, all three. It's the same percentage it had to run public access is now needed to run public educational and government. So you're severely hampered by that lack of money. No, not necessarily. Um, so the finance, will, we will be delving yeah. into more down the road. Um, but there are some advantages to how it's set up. Um, you know, there's disadvantages and advantages. So well, those are some stuff rent, so that frees up some money. Yes. <laughs> it, so well, far, in Everett, they pay rent to City Hall. Yeah. We don't have that. There's yeah. also, you know, some equipment may have been purchased by the school and some may have been purchased by us. So, you know, th these are all things we're going to get down to at, at another point in time. Right now, our whole goal since the station manager left was finding out what items there were issues with how to address those and open up the doors and avenues just like we did with the satellite stations and get get the groundwork laid. So when the station manager comes in, we already have stuff. So one of the first things we want the new station manager to do is get the camera working at the different spots. We want to have some of the things we'd like to have is training. So that way everyone gets trained on it. You know, there's different things, but we've already, you know, the new station manager will have to meet with the senior center and meet with the community center and work out the agreement on how it's going to work and the way it makes sense, and you know, this he's gonna or she's gonna have to meet with um, the Votech to see. You know, I've already we've opened it up where we can start to film in some of the spots, potentially in all the different rooms that they have. So if you have someone who is big into robotics and wants to do a robotics course, you know, that's one of the programs. So we may be able to film in the robotics room. Mm -hmm. So these are some things we've opened up. Uh, we've also discovered there's some issues, you know, like things that maybe aren't as big of a deal, but, you know, do we have redundancy on the hard drive? Do we have redundancy? Is the electric panel really in the best spot? Or should we move to two separate things? You know what I mean? So you have the panel in one spot and the other. So those are all some of the things we've worked on at this point up till now. Oh, yeah. um, so as far as redundancy, uh, my power drive just died on my computer yeah. at home. Hopefully that's all that happened and it didn't fry the hard drive, yep. because my data file of all the movies I own and whether or not they're public domain and what I've used for public uh, for Dr. Rapies, I can't access that now. If the drive is fried, I don't have it at all, and I have to go through everything I own and enter in and rebuild it. So you definitely want to make yeah. sure you've got backups. Somewhere. Well, there's backups one thing, but also just how you move that, how you hold the data, how you move it some of the wiring, do we have more than one wiring if the wiring goes bad, you know, oh, yeah. just stuff like simple little things that, not just the satellite locations, but also the more mundane. Uh, make sure we have scheduling software so we can schedule and grow correctly. Those are a lot of things that we've been doing. Uh, so the financing is definitely gonna be a part of it, um, but that's gonna be shortly down the road after we get these other things buttoned up and taken care of. When the franchise fee comes in, the part that's for pay, does it go right into an account that, not necessarily you personally, but the conglomerate that's paid has access to and can spend? We're, we're or is it held by City Hall and you have to request it from them and kind of beg to get it? 
No, so there is money there. Um, there's a system for, there's a limit, right? Yeah. So there's a, a purchase minimum that if it's large enough, then you have to put in a purchase order request, and there's a number of things that have to be done, right? But the money comes in, I think, on a monthly basis, which is why we saw that there yeah, was less we money saw, than pot this year. We've seen the increases in quarterly, last I saw. Maybe it's quarterly. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's five right, days in the year. Yeah. 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 But the, the money is there. We do have access to it. Yes. We can vote as a board and spend the money. We don't have to seek permission. There are certain rules on if it's more than say ten thousand dollars it has to go to bid because it is part of the government. Oh yeah. Well stuff like even that. as a non profit so, would have to go yeah, to bid. So there's yeah. there's certain things like that. But as far as getting to the nitty gritty and answering stuff about the finances, I just don't feel comfortable right now answering okay. that. That's I've fine. seen it, I know the money in it. Um, but there's gonna be a lot of great questions like those. And we're gonna meet and we're gonna have it just like we do now, an open forum. So you can ask those questions, you can hear the answers, you can see the information. Um, but like you said, just at this point, at least my concern and the way we've gone as a board is really, let's figure out what challenges there are. Yeah. That's why we have now an intern and where we can go from there and do we need, you know, what staffing do we need and, and that type of stuff. Because what we'd like to do after the station manager comes on board, gets this fixed and knocks off some of those things, is really do a big community outreach and hold different events so they can meet the new station manager, they can meet us, they can see the facility and get more and more people on board so they can really start to grow a lot. So, like what happened last year, and was it September or October? It was October. Yeah. October yeah. And what happened was it was all city officials and the public was really ostracized. It was all about. Mayor Burke was taking pictures with you know Michael Marks and Paul Donato, and it was all very uncomfortable. Ben Brown did not publicize it. I found out when he told me there was very little publicity about it. It was a very insider's club, and this is my fear. So my question as to what you were talking about was you said the money was like there's two different monies or it's folded in like the um, public and the educational. You would just... Um, the school has access to money and so does the station. And does this come from the station's um, quarterly payment, the 55 grand or so? They're both splitting it now? Yeah, I, there's, I don't there's want to an, I believe, based on the two-column report that we got from the city, that the 2% is split. So that 1% goes to the account that's for the station, the other account goes for the school. That said, we do have a report that we can provide at the next meeting that we got. We went through this during a public meeting with the city auditor, and she also runs the mm -hmm. city's finances. Her name is? It is not available to me in my brain right now, and I apologize for that. She's I can look it up. It's, her last name is Nunley, I believe. So she's the director of finance. It's not Shab Khan, it's another woman. That's correct. Okay. And so she came in, she walked us through a report. We did have that as a public meeting that was open, of course. Yeah. Um, I can provide that report, of course. We have it as part of our records. I'm happy to share that with all of you at the next meeting, if that's something that you'd like. Yeah. Well, to, to, the logi oh, excuse me. Yeah, sorry, yeah. to the logical mind, the station is at the high school. The high school benefits more than the public. So now with the public money going to the station, it's going more to educational than to public access. No matter how you slice it, it's still the, 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 the educational is benefiting more than the public. And that's a problem. That's a big, big problem. There, there has to be clear lines. And you know my position. Were I station manager, if I'm selected, which I doubt, because um, I voted for the other guy. But if I were a station manager, I would fight for that general fund to be overturned and delivered to PEG. It's not fair that the taxpayers of Medford are whacked every year with a raise and they're franchise free. As JJ McLean said to me at the police station, he goes, Joe calls it a double tier tax. Well, that wasn't my word, but that was JJ's word. The public is being double taxed. So that money belongs to PEG a home rule petition before some people were even born back in the early 80s. No, no, this is 2018. We're, we're way after the new millennium. That money is our money. And think of the access we could have. Think of what great things you three could do with satellite stations with 300, 400, 500 grand, a million dollars. It's just not fair. And I will put that forth to the city council because we've got to get this all rectified. We've got to have money to do public access. Right now, it's government-run access. Arthur's correct. 
should be a 501c3, should have people passionate about access. Station manager coming in, the last seven, what, they had one good manager, Mark Gallagher, way back in the old days, remember him? From watching the old tapes, that was before my time. So Mark Gallagher ran the station correctly. They had seven managers since, including Ben Brown, who didn't know what they were doing. And that's not, the city hall should not be appointing station managers. City hall's not in the business of station management. And all due respect, having been in it for 39 years or so, there's a way to do it, and City Hall Medford does not do it. So you would have a lot of money to play with. We would have state-of-the-art. You know, Muccini Burke says on the YouTube channel, welcome to your state-of-the-art new access station. No, it's not ours. It's the government channel and the educational. Now, just a little quick history that, that goes with this. When the fire station had a VHS player, playing the city council meetings. And during Mayor McGlynn's tenure at the end of his um, reign, there was a loop. So every week you saw the same council meeting for eight weeks and the city council couldn't get 400 bucks out of the million, 400 bucks for a DVD player. You've got it, that's Medford. So I just want you to know what we're dealing with here because they're gonna treat you well, they're gonna say things, but at the end of the day, the administration holds firm to what it wants. We want public access and we need you to have the tools to give us public access and that means the money. It always comes down to the money. There's lots of it. Lots of it being diverted, let's re-divert it. Wouldn't that be a blast? I can tell you a way how to find out what the estimate is for what's coming in this year. At the city budget that they just passed, there's a line item entry for their 3% that they're expecting to come in, because that's city money. It's all city money, but that's city, city money that goes in the general fund. You get that estimated figure divided by three. One of those is for education, one of those is for, government, is, is for public. That's how you find out how much you can expect to come in for you, for the high school, and if you ever get the home rule petition overturned, that other 3%. Only problem with that is, that's good for us, but since the city budget operates with that 3% money, and since the weird rules of budgets is every year, you know, they can get a 5% bigger budget. It's that 3%, let, let's say it's, a, let's say it's three quarters of a million dollars. Let's, let's say a million to make the numbers easy. I don't know what it is. But if they've got that million budgeted this year, and next year you don't have the franchise fee to take it from, that's still in the budget plus another 5%, and now the public gets whacked and they pay more property taxes. That's the reality of how a budget works. And, and that will make them hate the access station because they'll say, you took that money from us, our taxes went up. So they've got us in a situation where if the right thing is done, we look like the bad guys. Well, it's, it, what's going to happen is, and this is a quick note, eventually the franchise fee is going to end because you know the cable providers don't want to pay it even though it's not their money. So, the, you know, Verizon goes to Beacon Hill every year, and eventually they're going to get Beacon Hill to control it across the Commonwealth. The franchise fee is going to go away anyways, and Medford's not going to have that money. So, let's get the money now. I'd love to get it retroactively for the past 30 years, but that ain't going to happen. All right, so do, do you have anything else you'd like to add before we... Real quick and, up? and real friendly, um, you know, as they have a radio station in Somerville, I see... A radio station as an important component of getting people excited about access because it's not as difficult as sitting at a computer and learning Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere, whatever. Um, we need to get the community to understand it's a community center. It's fun and it, it's just going to be inviting. So last October it was a closed club. There was no promotion of it. The administration didn't want that. Now we have a cable advisory board six months after that. We need to have a new station manager. We need to have really open up access. And yes, there is access in Medford. Right now, the fear is realized. City Hall is enjoying this money. City Hall doesn't want any criticism. They want no criticism of politicians. You see what, if you read the Medford Mass Yahoo group, um, a fellow was complaining about how the city council this week treated two citizens. I see it time and again. I filed complaints with Neil Osborne across the hall the way senior citizens and one woman have been treated by the city council. 
That's why they don't want access TV. They don't want criticism. My God, with my blog, they want me assassinated. And that's the God's honest truth. And I'm a, just an old man that wants to help this city. And like I said, I'm, I'm available to you people if you want any guidance. Because if I die tomorrow, I just want to have my input in there to help you, to help the city. I've had my fun with access. Let's build something great. Thank you. Um, all right, so there's anything else that either one of you would like to add or anyone on the board would like to bring up or should we vote to conclude the meeting? We are adjourned at 6.54 p.m. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you.